college football under the radar against the spread pick them for week number two last week. Those of you who doubted, I went nine and three against the number. Got to toss them back out here again. Uh, very shortly, by week four, uh, I believe I'm going to start using uh, current numbers and whatnot as opposed to basing it on uh, totally gut feel. But so far, uh, it's worked out well, and I will start having spreadsheets and whatnot up on the show. But for now, went nine and three last week. This, of course, brought to you by BetUS, where the game begins. It's America's premier online sports book. Go over to BetUS.com, make sure that you are signed up, and make sure that you sign up for the picks contest over at WinningCuresEverything.com. Very easy to do. There's a contest section. Also, you can look for the link on my Twitter page. It's very easy to do. Go follow me at GaryWCE. Now, with that said, game number one here, and I'm going to try and write my times down fairly quickly. Game one, Southern Miss at Miami. Now, again, these are under-the-radar games. Miami is a 25-point favorite currently at BetUS. Total is 51. It's a 12 p.m. Eastern time game on the ACC Network. Looking at some of the trends here, Southern Miss 4-0 and against the spread in their last four non-conference games. You've got 2-6 and against the spread after a loss. They are also 2-8 and against the spread in September. Miami on the other side. Uh, not much better, 3-7 and against the spread. In their last 10 non-conference games, they are 2-6 and six against the spread at home against losing teams. This line has bounced around a ton. Uh, it's gone from 25 up to 28, back down to 25. It's, I mean, it's just all over the place. Uh, this is not the same Miami team, I don't believe. I think this is a competent, well-run organization. I'm going to take Miami to cover here. Tyler Van Dyke looks good. Uh, Southern Miss with the quarterback situation. Yeah, they so of course, Keys, the the starting quarterback, goes out with a concussion last week, and you know we'll see if he's going to play this week. Who knows? But he goes out with a concussion. The backup quarterback comes in, immediately throws an interception, and then they run Frank Gore Jr., the running back, at quarterback for the rest of the game. It's exactly what they did last season. They were successful with it last season, but of course they end up losing the game to Liberty. Uh, I think going on the road to Miami, Miami is too much. This is way too talented. I'm going to take Miami to cover this. I, I like them by four touchdowns here, so I will take the Hurricanes on that one. Now, moving on, UTSA heading to Army, and I am I'm pumped. I'm pumped. I want to see this game. I'm going to have it on one of my other screens. Of course, I've got five screens that I watch football on. I've got a main one and then four others. Uh, UTSA is currently a two-and-a-half-point favorite. Latest line over at BetUS. Total is 54-and-a-half. This one's on CBS Sports Network at noon Eastern. Uh, UTSA 5-and-0 oh against the spread in their last five in September. They are 9-and-1 against the number following a straight-up loss. Of course, they lost in overtime to Houston last week. Uh, Army, 2-and-5 against the spread their last seven at home. They are 1-and-4 against the spread in their last five games overall. Uh, I am concerned about the Army quarterback situation here uh, after losing those guys last year. And yes, they were able to put up some points on Coastal Carolina, but don't forget that is a Coastal Carolina defense that lost quite a few guys. Uh, the cut block issues, uh, the rule change that the NCAA implemented is really going to affect service academies big time here. I don't think that we've seen that adjusted in the line just yet. Uh, UTSA, way more athletic, way more talented I am going to take UTSA to win this game. I think if UTSA had won that game against Houston, I might would be picking the other way here. But I, I think UTSA bounces back. They cover this two-and-a-half-point spread here. I like UTSA on this one. We have another game. SEC, noon. This one's going to be on ESPN. South Carolina heads to Reynolds Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville, Arkansas. And Arkansas currently an eight-point favorite at BetUS. The total sits at 53, which is kind of a low number, uh, at least to me initially. Arkansas 7-0 against the spread their last seven in September. They, they start out seasons pretty well. They are 7-3 against the spread of their last 10 at home. That does include last week's game against Cincinnati. They closed as a six-and-a-half-point favorite, and they, of course, won by seven. So, South Carolina won 6-1 and one against the spread their last eight road games. They are 0-4 against the spread following a straight-up win. That is not trending in the way that I would have thought. But when I look at this, Arkansas, injury issues in the secondary. 
South Carolina did not play all that well in their opening night game. A lot of pressure week one for Spencer Rattler and that bunch. I think going on the road in week two, I think the passing game will be considerably better. This does not feel like a two-possession game to me, so I will take South Carolina to keep this one relatively close. Uh, I think they can win the game. They've got the special team's advantage. So I like South Carolina here a lot. I think they can win outright, so I'm certainly going to take them plus eight. Give me the Gamecocks on that one. Now we move along. North Carolina at Georgia State. Interesting game. This one's in Atlanta. It is at uh, whatever the the field is called, formerly Turner Field, but Georgia State's new football stadium. And that place is pretty awesome, by the way. Georgia State is a seven and a half point home dog. Latest line over at BetUS. The total sits at 64 and a half. It's 12 p.m. Eastern Time, ESPNU game. And I like what Georgia State was able to do last week against South Carolina. Now, yes, there was all the mess with the special teams and everything else. North Carolina, I don't believe, has an advantage over them in that aspect of the game. Uh, North Carolina is going to be able to score. Georgia State's defense, I think, is okay. I think they're pretty good. So they may be able to slow them down a little bit. North Carolina 0-4 against the spread following a spread win. Now, remember, week zero, they did not cover that spread against Florida A&M. Uh, they are 1-4 and against the spread in their last five non-conference games. Uh, Georgia State 6-1 and against the spread versus a team with a winning record. That is pretty good. And they are 4-1 and against the spread following a spread loss. They did not cover the spread against South Carolina last week, so that puts them in spots for this one. Georgia State likes to run the football. They will be able to run the football. I like Granger, that quarterback and whatnot, but that running back room is legit. They've got a good offensive line. I believe they will be able to run the ball on North Carolina, and they're going to hold the ball, and they are going to keep it away from North Carolina. I like Georgia State to stay in this game. Plus seven and a half. I get the hook here. Give me Georgia State at home. I think they can keep up with these guys. Yes, I still think Drake May and that bunch are going to score. I don't know what the status is on Josh Downs. I don't think it matters. I think Georgia State is going to be able to stay in this ball game. So I'm going to take the Panthers here. I like them. I like what they're doing. So give me Georgia State on that one to cover seven and a half. Uh, let's see. Moving right along. Oh, here we go. Memphis and Navy. Now, Anxiety Bowl, anybody? Anybody, uh, you know, Hot Seat Bowl, maybe? Something along those lines? Navy is a six-point underdog at home. It's a 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time CBS Sports Network game. Uh, the total sits at 50.5. Of course, these lines, courtesy of BetUS. Memphis 0-10 against the spread under Ryan Silverfield. That is an issue. That is an issue. Uh, they are 1-4 against the spread versus losing teams. Uh, Navy 4-0 against the spread after a straight-up loss. And they are 9-0 and against the spread against a losing team. Of course, Memphis got blasted by uh, Mississippi State last week. Navy also lost to Delaware. Uh, again, with the cut block rule that the NCAA implemented in the offseason. That is going to affect uh, the service academies. Memphis has always had issues with Navy. They just have. That triple option, the way that they do it. Now, maybe the cut block stuff changes that this year. Uh, but this feels like it's too many points here. I could see this being a field goal either way. Memphis, for whatever reason, does not play well on the road. So I will take Navy to cover the six here, uh, knowing that one of these, some somebody's in trouble. Somebody's in trouble here. I'll just tell you. Moving right along, Washington State at Wisconsin. And what a, what a fun, interesting, unique ball game this one is. This is a 3.30 p.m. Eastern time game on Fox. It's on Big Fox. Should do some pretty good ratings. And, you know, as all the realignment and expansion and whatnot, people have been diving into TV numbers. Washington State tends to draw a pretty good crowd for whatever reason. So they will continue to do so here, I would imagine, with the big name brand that is Wisconsin. Wisconsin, a 17.5 point favorite latest line at BetUS. Total sits at 49. Washington State, 1-5 against the spread against the Big Ten. They are 1-8 and eight against the spread of their last nine games in September. They do not start off seasons well, and they certainly did not start off well last week. Cam Ward looking not so good against Idaho State. Uh, I think they won that game 24-17. to 17. It was not pretty at all. Um, I mean, they, they played the backup quarterback. It was just all kinds of problems. You expected a little bit more continuity after Jake Dicker took them to a bowl game last year, but, of course, they lost the bowl game. Jaden Delara transfers out, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, you got all kind of problems there. So, 
Um, Wisconsin, 2-5 and five against the spread against the Pac-12. I think that they're playing a little bit different level of competition than Washington State, but obviously. 5-1 uh, and one against the spread uh, after allowing less than 20 points. Paul Christ likes to keep that thing rolling. I think he's going to do the same thing here. Give me Wisconsin minus 17 and a half. That offensive line looks good. They are back to doing what they do, bashing people. And they are going to incredibly outclass the line of scrimmage for Washington State. It's not even close. Like, I just, I, I can't see any world where Wisconsin doesn't win this by, by three touchdowns. I just don't see it. And the reason for that is I don't think Washington State is going to score. I do think Wisconsin can get to, what, 24 at least, 28 against Washington State. Uh, and that's only if they decide to go full service academy and just decide to run, like, five total drives for the entire game. Like, I think they could do that if they want to. So give, give me Wisconsin to cover in this one. Next up, we got Virginia at Illinois. And that's an interesting ball game. Uh, Brett Bielema, of course, went to Virginia last year and got smoked by Bronco Menden, uh, Mendo, eh, Bronco Mendenhall in that bunch. Uh, Illinois is a four and a half point favorite. Latest line over at BetUS. The total sits at 57 and a half. It's a 4 p.m. Eastern Time ESPNU game. In this spot, UVA 8-3 and three against the spread following a straight-up win. They are 7-3 and three against the spread after a spread loss. And that's exactly what happened against Richmond last week. Uh, Illinois 5-0-1 oh, against the spread after a straight-up loss. They are 5-0-1 oh, against the spread in their last six against a winning team. But they are 1-7-1. and one, No, excuse me, 1-5-1 and one against the spread in their last seven non-conference games. Uh... This line, four and a half. Uh, now, I understand Tony Elliott's the new head coach at Virginia. Uh, they are replacing their entire offensive line, et cetera. They did not look good early against Richmond, but they got that thing turned around. Brennan Armstrong looks pretty good. Uh, in this situation, because the Illinois secondary did look questionable to me against Indiana last week. I mean, Indiana, with Connor Bazelak was able to throw the ball just all over them. They they had holes in that secondary you could drive a Mack truck through. It was nuts. Um I don't think that they can get that fixed immediately. So I think that Brennan Armstrong is going to be able to find some guys open. And in doing that, I think they're going to score some points. Illinois, not really cut out to score a ton of points. So with that said, I believe I'm going to take Virginia to cover the four and a half here. I don't know that they win the game outright, but four and a half, I mean, 21 to 17, I still get the cover. So I, I will take Virginia because that just feels like too many points. That, that Illinois secondary scares me. Uh, we'll see what Tommy DeVito looks like this week. I, I don't have I, the Virginia defense is eh. I think Illinois can have success against them, but uh, at the same time, I think Virginia their passing attack can have some success even with the rebuilt offensive line. I think they can have success against Illinois' defense. So and moving on from there, we've got a few more games here. App State. App State heads to Kyle Field, and man alive, uh, do we have a, a thing here. App State coming off of an emotional home loss. They thought they had that game won multiple times uh, against North Carolina, and now they get to go on the road to a team who actually has a defense. That's the biggest thing for Texas A&M. A&M, by the way, a 19-point favorite at home. Total is 54, latest line over at BetUS. This is a 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time game. It's on ESPN2. Uh, looking at some of the trends here. App State minus, uh, excuse me, App State 1-6 and six against the spread. Their last seven on the road against a winning team. And they are also 0-4 against the spread. Their last four non-conference games. That does not bode well in this situation. Texas A&M 6-1 against the spread following a spread loss. And they are 16-5 and five against the spread in their last 21 non-conference games. Jimbo Fisher likes to run up the score if he's given the opportunity. Chase Bryce made North Carolina's defense look silly last week. But when Chase Bryce goes up against a really good defense, it, things have not gone well. We'll just say that. And Texas A&M does have a really good defense. I mean, they are going to out-athlete App State on a level that they didn't even come close to seeing last week at home. Uh, I am going to take Texas A&M. I think a lot of people want to buy into this App State thing because they put up so many points last week. <laughs> there is a chasm of difference between Texas A&M and North Carolina. It's not even close. And the only way that I could see App State covering this 
is if you get multiple Haynes King turnovers. Now, that is not outside the realm of possibilities, but I don't foresee it happening. I see Texas A&M trying to establish the run more in this game. Uh, Chase Bryce making a few mistakes, and that will lead to, you know, 21 to 24 point victory for Texas A&M, and it'll be a snoozer. That's just the way that I'm seeing it. This is not anything against you, App State. Just the way that I see this game going, especially coming off of a uh, loss like that. I mean, it's it's situational. Situational, for sure. Moving along, Houston. Houston going to Texas Tech. I brought this one up just a little bit ago. And Dana Holgerson, of course, heading to Lubbock, Texas. My goodness. Uh, He loves to show out against Big 12 competition after leaving West Virginia, and he gets another opportunity to do so. Texas Tech is a a three-and-a-half-point favorite at home. The latest line over at BetUS, and the total sits at 63, so they expect points. It's 4 p.m. Eastern time game on FS1. Uh, Houston, 5-1 and one against the spread following a spread loss. However, they are 1-4 and four their last five against the spread against winning teams. Uh, Texas Tech, 4-1 and one against the spread against the AAC in their last five matchups. However, coming off of a spread win, they are 1-5-1. and one. That is their last seven after a spread win. And they did get a spread win last week. So, uh, Houston, the way that that game went last week against UTSA, it looked like those guys thought that they were just going to walk into the Alamo Dome and be able to sneak out with a win, and they didn't have to really fully prepare for it, etc. And they got lucky, and they did, in fact, get a win in quadruple overtime, or three overtimes, or whatever it was. A lot of overtime. They, they, got, to, they got to the two-point conversions, right? But Clayton Toon bailed them out. They found ways to make plays at the end of the game, even though they were down 21-7 to going into the fourth quarter. And they ended up winning the game 37-35. to uh, Yes, Texas Tech is a little bit of a different deal than UTSA. I don't believe that Texas Tech is better coached than UTSA. And I don't believe that this game means as much to Texas Tech as it did to UTSA. With that being said, Dana Holgerson, in this spot, I think will be able to shock Texas Tech. Plus three and a half here. I'm going to take the Cougars. I like what they're doing. I think that they are going to be much more prepared for this because I think they were preparing for this game more so than the last game. Remember, this is a future Big 12 matchup. That's the way that I see this. I think Clayton Toon is going to have a lot of success against that Texas Tech secondary. Look, I like Smith. I like what he's doing at quarterback there. I don't think he is the ideal quarterback that Kitley wanted to run with, and I think there's going to be some growing pains in this game. Uh, Now, don't forget, Doug Belk, the defense coordinator at Houston, uh, really, really good last year. I expect him to have a game plan out of this world for this weekend. So, we will see, but I will take Houston plus three and a half in this spot. All right, moving along, we've got three more games to hit here, and we're going UAB at Liberty. Liberty, a six and a half point underdog at home, total of 50 over at BetUS. 6 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN+. Plus. That's right, this is a streaming special. So make sure that you have your subscription to ESPN+. Plus. Uh, UAB, 6-0 against the spread on the road. They are 5-0 against the spread. Their last five against winning teams. They are 5-1 against the spread. Their last six in September. Now, yes, I do know that they have a new coach, Brian Vincent. Uh, This is his first big-time spot. He gets to show what he's got. They got all their dudes, and they are ready to roll. And, yes, UAB power-rated really highly. So this is going to be interesting to see. However, Liberty, 9-2 and two against the spread. Their last 11 at home. They are 4-1 and one against the spread against the Conference USA. I look at this, and I will tell you, I, watching UAB against Alabama A&M shows you nothing. Uh, this game last year, Liberty won 36-12. to 12. And, no, they don't have Malik Willis anymore. I understand that. But uh, Charlie Brewer, of course, getting hurt. The quarterback gets hurt. Game one, he's going to be out for a while for Liberty. But, man, they brought in uh, that Salter kid last week, the quarterback, and he was – I was impressed. I think he maybe should have been starting from the very get-go. He looks like he has got something when them lights are on. Uh, I like like Liberty. I like Liberty here. I think they're going to cover the 6.5. I think it will be a close game. But I do like uh, I do like Liberty to be able to cover at home. I think they're going to play with a little bit of pride. They snuck out. They found a way to get that win. And yeah, I think you got a little bit of a coaching advantage with Hugh Freeze over Brian Vincent. Obviously, one has been around for a long, long time, coaching the SEC, etc. Uh, wasn't fired for performance, 
I will tell you that. But regardless, uh, Brian Vincent, first time head coach, going on the road. This could be tricky. I will take Liberty to cover six and a half, even though I, I do believe that UAB is the better team overall. I think Liberty could get this win. Just saying. All right, moving along, we got two more, and we are already over an hour, and we have an interview. <laughs> All right, Kansas at West Virginia. West Virginia, a 13.5-point favorite. Total sits at 50 over at BetUS, 6 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN+. Plus. That's right, it's another ESPN Plus streaming special for the Big 12, Kansas. Guys, 6-20 and 20 against the spread after a straight-up win. Uh, they are 22-46-1 in their last 69 road games. It is putrid. It is awful. Uh, West Virginia, 4-0 and against the spread in September. They are 9-2-1 and against the spread their last 12 at home. They do play better in Morgantown for sure. Uh, that is an emotional uh, loss that they took against their rival last week, West Virginia. Kansas, I did mention in the preview earlier, that team looks functional. It looks like they have completely rebuilt that organization, and it is humming right now. They've got better athletes than I thought that they would at Kansas in year two under Lance Leipold. Neil Brown, uh, this is a pressure spot because you are expected to win this game. You are expected to win this game big. Yes, I know that you've got JT Daniels. Things looked pretty good, and you probably should have won that game if the ball doesn't bounce off of that kid's hands against Pitt. That's the that's the way that this goes. So, yeah, I'm. I think Kansas puts the fear of God into them. I think Kansas could win this game. So you're giving me thirteen and a half. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to take that. And the reason being, there's so much pressure on Neil Brown and that coaching staff to be able to get a win, and not just to get a win, but to get a convincing win. I don't think they'll be able to do it. I think they're going to make mistakes. I think there's going to be problems. They could win the game. This feels much more like, I'll tell you this, my number on it was 10. So I'm getting three and a half points of added value here. Uh, yeah, I'll take I'll take the Jayhawks. I mean, it's, it's a scary thing to do to bet on Kansas. But I do like the Jayhawks here. So I will take them against West Virginia plus 13 and a half over bet US. Finally, last game here. Interesting, interesting spot. Late night game. I say late night. It's a 7 p.m. Central time game, 8 p.m. Eastern time game on ACC Network. Boston College at Virginia Tech. And the Hokies are a two-and-a-half point favorite over at BetUS. The total sits at 46 here. Trends on this. Virginia Tech, 1-5 and five against the spread their last six at home. They are 3-9 and nine against the spread their last 12 overall. Now That, of course, dates back into the Justin Fuente era. But game number one for Brent Pry did not go well. Grant Wells is throwing the ball to the wrong color jerseys over and over and over again. It's just not good. Just not good. Uh, on the other side, though, Boston College, 2-5 and five against the spread. Their last seven against the ACC. They are 1-4 and four against the spread after a straight-up loss. And, yes, this team lost at home to Rutgers last week. The defense did not look good. The offense turned the football over three different times. I like Phil Dracovic. I like Zay Flowers. I like Jeff Halfley. I also like Brent Pry. I think Brent Pry has a longer way to go to get things right than Boston College. Jeff Halfley has a two-year head start on him. Brent Pry is going to have to rework this thing because what Fuente left him with is a disaster. It's a mess. It's not the roster that Pry wants to work with, and you got a quarterback that has the yips, a quarterback that is totally fine with slinging that thing no matter who's going to catch it. And I was hoping that Grant Wells would be better, and maybe he does perform better at home, but for my money, I'm going to bet on the better quarterback here, and that is going to be Phil Djokovic. I'm going to take BC to cover the two and a half here uh, because these two teams, I mean, both of them need, both of them need something good to happen. And and I will take Boston College in that spot because I think they're, I think they're a little further ahead. And so that is going to wrap up the pick em for week two. Uh, and that is the uh, under the radar pick them. Don't forget, go enter the contest. It's brought to you by BetUS. The contest, of course, over at winningcureseverything.com slash contest. Uh, there is also a link in the description. So make sure that you go sign up for that. The winner gets a $25 Amazon gift card. And if I'm not mistaken, and I didn't put this out on the tweet, if I'm not mistaken, I think you get a $50 free play with BetUS. Now you'll have to have a BetUS account. 
But we'll, we'll figure that out as we go. You guys can reach out to me. Just make sure that you sign up for the contest. Get your picks in. It's 10 different games. It's going to be a good time. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.